authentication is so easy, painful, fast or insecure, you decide. But in 2025, getting auth done the fast way is easier than ever. And that's what this video is, a how-to authentication guide for 2025. And let me tell you, you don't need a 12 hours course on Udemy, because today I show you everything you need to know to get started and move on from there, how auth generally works, what is a auth provider and which one should you choose. Then we go over a typical implementation where I'm showing you the basic principles and what you need to be aware of. And with understanding all these things, you will build the perfect authentication system for exactly your needs. So let's get started. And of course, I sketched out a little diagram here. So authentication, how does it generally work? We start basically with a sign-in or maybe a register. So this is like the starting point of every authentication system. So then you have kind of yeah, two branches. You can go into the authenticated state, like the user puts in the right data and gets authenticated, or you have no access. Maybe you put it in the wrong password or something like that, or you don't even have an account. So if you go the upper way here, you have different methods. Like you can do email and password. This is like the OG way, but I wouldn't suggest it because passwords, yeah, they can make a lot of problems. So then you have magic links, pretty safe, but maybe a little bit annoying. You get an email and then you have to click a link and then there is Google and Apple and all the OAuth providers. So then we are in the authenticated state. And I said here JWT or session cookies because that's like the two main methods. So then the typical flow is that we go into more branches because now we are in the application and what we can generally do is either mutate some data. So we do some actions, we delete an entry, we create an entry. This is the mutate data and then we navigate around in the application. Like we're going on the about page or on the dashboard or yeah, we're just navigating through the application. With doing that, we always have an auth check. For mutating data, for example, you have a auth check maybe in your server actions, like in your mutation functions and if you navigate, you have an auth check usually somewhere like in a middleware. So a middleware is a function that runs on every request so you can check if the user is who they say they are. And then I have this small arrows here which say admin access. And what I mean with that is that auth is not authentication. Auth for me is generally two things. And I wrote that down here at the top. So with auth, I mean authentication and authorization. And the difference is actually pretty easy. Authentication just means who are you? And authorization means, what are you allowed to? With authentication, you get into the system. Like I'm saying, hey, I'm a user, let me in. And with authorization, let's say I'm an admin, I can access things others can't. And that's why I wrote here admin access, or maybe everything starts from the beginning. So if you navigate, you maybe want to navigate again, or if you mutate some data, you want to mutate some data again. That's why these arrows go back. And then at the end, of course, you have this sign out or log out. Maybe it's a button or maybe it's a timeout whatever. And that's how auth generally works. I would say pretty easy, right? But of course, this is abstracted. So it's all you need to know nowadays, but it's not all that there is to know. So now let's tackle auth providers because there are some out there. You can do everything on your own with Next.js. You can go into auth.js. There's better auth, which is pretty popular right now. There's Superbase, which has auth built in. There's Clerk, you might heard, or things like WorkOS. So you can decide between different options here. But what is a auth provider? What is it? It's basically just a service that takes care of all the complex things for you. Because authentication, when doing it manually, is very, very hard. If you want to move fast and if you want to just ship your code, you want that things are handled for you. And that's what an auth provider is doing. So something happens in your application, let's say a user logs in or a user logs out or a user wants to create a new account or delete an account. Every time a request is sent to your auth provider and it's doing the magic, you just need to provide some UI and basically that's nearly all. But we will get to that in a minute. And maybe you might think, okay, at the end of the day, it doesn't care, right? Which auth provider do I choose? I just want that it works. Yes. But you need to be aware of these three things. Because A, you want it to be secure. So you shouldn't do it on your own. I mean, you can, but it's hard and it's error prone. So you shouldn't do things on your own and you should not ever stick to old libraries that are not supported anymore because there are security branches in there. B, you want that it looks good. You want that you have some kind of startup UI. And the third thing, 
you want it to be easy, of course. Not just easy for your customers to use, of course, there too, but especially easy for you as a developer. Because nothing is more disgusting than ugly documentation, for example. So what would I suggest? So I said there's better off. I heard it's popular right now. I heard the feedback is great. There's Superbase, but I only would use Superbase if you were using Superbase not only for auth. So if your whole database, your whole backend is Superbase, then of course opt into their auth. And then there are things like Clerk, which is pretty popular, or WorkOS, which is pretty popular. If you want to have something for a small project, go with Clerk. And if you kind of want a grown system and take things pretty, pretty seriously, then you can stick with WorkOS. And this is actually exactly what I will use now because they have a tool AuthKit. Ah, I love this website. Yeah, I just will use AuthKit now to set up authentication in an example application just because it's free, easy to use. And thankfully, it's the sponsor of today's video. And if you don't know WorkOS, that's okay. But actually, you use the products of WorkOS every day. For example, with Shetsian, because Shetsian is under the hood using Redix UI. And Redix under the hood is, if we zoom a little bit in, you see it here, made by WorkOS. So that's why I really like these components of AuthKit because they just look good. They are powered by WorkOS plus Redix and they just work. They just look clean. So if you just build your AI startup and want to grow fast, then stick with AuthKit. You got a pretty components here and everything is working just clean because it's designed for developers and built for the enterprise, which is great, especially when you need to handle all these GDPR stuff. So I just set this up in my app. So like you have the docs, you have the AuthKit docs, and then you have this quick start here at the top. The process of setting everything up is nearly the same as everywhere. You just create an account, of course, and then you set things up like you're just installing an npm package you always have these callback urls so your provider needs to know what is the url of your application so you just configure that in the dashboard then you just add some private keys and then you're just creating some kind of secrets you're wrapping everything in a auth kit provider you need that for the ui and then we're just adding the middleware i already talked about that and we will see that in a minute and then you can add the auth in there you need to add a callback route because that's the route that is called when you for example log in and then you just are provided here with some examples of a server component of a client component how to actually secure your routes or your data and in the case of worker as you have here for example a point branding now where you can just customize this box and you see it already just looks great i didn't customize anything so you can put in your brand colors you can put in a funny logo here of whatever type of brand logo you want to use you see different types of components that come with AuthKit, like you see the basic sign-in model, you see emails. So for example, if you want to reset the password, that's all already done for you. So you don't need to do anything. And yeah, you can just configure for dark mode, for light mode. Things are just looking good. So let's jump into code. So as I already mentioned, you always have something like a middleware. A middleware that runs on every request to secure that the user is, for example, authenticated. So here we're just calling the AuthKit middleware, which is just imported by the NPM package. And how can we now create a protected route? We just, okay, you don't need to name the route protected, of course, but this just makes things easy here now because we can just call the with auth function and we say ensure signed in. So I want to ensure that the user is signed in. Things can be slightly differently named if you pick clerk or better auth or next auth things just have a different name but work the same here so you don't need to be scared that things are completely different if you take a different auth provider so you want that the user is signed in when loading this route here or this component and then you can also go into your server actions and do exactly the same thing so here i would just want that this server action can just be called when the user is signed in of course, here it's not working because this is just a mock function. So something I would need to do here is like if no user, return user not found or something like that. But that's totally up to you how you want to handle that. And then the basic page is just looking like that. So if there's no user, I show a sign in and a sign up button. And if there is a user, I just show a sign out button, which is type submit. And when it's submitted, it calls a action and a form, which is calling the sign out function, which gets imported from WorkOS. That's how easy it just is. And one minute ago, I said that we had to add a API route endpoint. So here it is under login, you create a route TS. That's how things are handled in next JS. We just need to get the sign in URL function and yeah, that's like the, the basic magic. But most of the time you can just copy and paste it from the quick start guide of your auth provider. And if you take a look at this, that's how things are looking right now. So I can just decide, do I want to sign in? Do I want to sign up? 
I just sign in now. I get this beautiful UI. I can say I want to continue with Google. This is hopefully blurred right now. I hope I didn't forget that as well. You just click your account and get logged into your application. Then you just get presented with welcome back, my name, and I have the sign out button. And with that simple sign out button, we can just sign out of the system. And that's generally said, just the beginning. Now you know what auth is, now you know what a auth provider is and which are out there and how do you set one up. But as I said, it's just the beginning. From now you can move on into complex topics like multi-factor authentication or resetting passwords. But most of the things are already done for you when you stick to a great auth provider. So thanks to WorkOS for sponsoring this video. Link to them is in the description. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye bye.